It wasn't your fault. I can't protect Gotham City like this. I became a symbol to fight crime, but I don't understand those who commit it. I have to become one of them. Someone with a troubled past and no chance at a future. How far are you willing to go? Blackgate Prison. As an inmate, I can hide in plain sight. The rats won't give up their king to Batman. They spill blood, not secrets. But they'll talk to one of their own. Undercover, sir. I'll make the necessary arrangements. You really think the Rat King's in Blackgate? He is, and I'll find him. I'll stop the Day of Wrath and end his reign. This is Batman Arkham Shadow by Camouflage, who also made Iron Man VR. Maybe these guys have some sort of special movie license and we may start to see more movies turn into VR games finally, eh? It was released on 22nd of October 2024. About the game. So you are playing the legendary Batman and you have to take down the Rat King and his gang before the Day of Wrath happens. You will sneak around, you will go undercover, you will go all over Gotham City in a way you have never experienced before in virtual reality. As you play, you are going to be earning XP points and as those stack up to 4,000, you will get one upgrade point to spend on either your combat, Batsuit, Gadgets and Predator, which is basically your sneak takedown moves. There are also many collectibles to find in this game. Some are right in front of your face, others you will really have to search for and even work for by solving some puzzles. Now I have to say that this Batman game has one of the best told and engaging stories I've come across on the quest yet. If you like games with stories, then you will totally enjoy this one. Game menus. There are plenty of menus to adjust the game to your needs from comfort, controls, audio, language and difficulty. It's all laid out really well and fits in with the theme game style. Levels and size. As well as the story, the size of the Batman is a winner. It's a huge game. From you playing the game from above ground to going underground, being in buildings and sneaking around so many rooms, hanging about on ledges, making your way to and from the Batcave. And let me tell you, when you are outside on the rooftops, some of those views are absolutely amazing. The lighting and the shadows and the fog, smoke or mist really turns the visuals into something special. And the cutscenes that are from a direct aerial view are just a work of art, as well as all the other cutscenes that drive the game. It all looks superb. Controls. Now the controls may trip you up. They are well designed and laid out, but it's going to take some time to memorize. Everything is explained to you as you play the game, and there are also tutorial videos. If you go into your menu where you upgrade your armor and gear, etc., you will also find explanations of how to do certain moves. Mechanics. The game has a really strong story as you would expect from a Batman game and all the cutscenes and actual playing go hand in hand with it perfectly. Everything works how you expect it to. I only encountered a few bugs whilst playing but that's pretty superb going for a game that's just been released and for this size. Weapons. Now you only really have your Batarang and later you get a glue C4 gun which is also executed perfectly by having it lay down the glue in a bat shape. Then you also get a smoke bomb on the inside of your left forearm which restocks after a couple of minutes and of course you have your grapple hook also. There are also options to upgrade your smoke and batarang. Batman doesn't use guns so the game is staying true to the legend. Leveling up options. I love the system for upgrading in this game and it all looks so clean. Everything is laid out in a honeycomb design and when you hover over something, it will give you a quick explanation and then if you click on it, you will get a more in detail explanation. There are four groups to choose from. Combat, Batsuit, Gadgets and Predator. Each group has a decent amount of upgrades, all attained by fighting to gain XP. Once you hit 4000 XP, you get one upgrade point to upgrade whichever you desire. Enemies and bosses. 
There are many enemies you will encounter. Some no weapons, some have sticks, some have guns, some have electric batons, some have armor on and have great defense. Each enemy will require a different tactic to take down. It's great that you can use smoke bombs to disorientate them and then go in for the knockout. But if guns get pulled on you, then you've got to grapple for the rooftops and move around a few times so they lose sight of you. You can go the direct approach or sometimes you have the options to sneak attack so you can get behind them and take them down quietly. You can also use your Batarang as a distraction. You have many options, so whatever your playstyle is, you're gonna have a blast. There are also big bosses which present to you more challenges and thought, but I'd have liked to have seen just a couple more for the game of this size. Puzzles. The puzzles in this are not overly complicated, but there are a few. Most of them seem like they are to acquire the collectibles, but I think that's a really smart move by the developers because it offers you more for your game. So once you complete the main game, you know it's not just about finding those collectibles, but you may have to solve a puzzle to get them. However, I would have liked to have seen more of a variation in the puzzles. My thoughts. Now I see this game has a lot of hype and people are going crazy for it and it's easy to see why. But as much as this game is a visual masterpiece and the fighting combat is excellently done and the story is right up there, I'm a little disappointed because it's not a fully free roam game. Not like Assassin's Creed Nexus where you can grapple and jump on any of the roofs or surfaces you wish. There are only certain things you can grapple onto. For me, this would have really pushed it to being one of the greatest games on the quest. And don't get me wrong, it really is an absolute superb game. Even if you are not a Batman fan, you will still enjoy this game a ton. But I really would have liked to have seen more freedom. But this is just me being picky. It's a shame this couldn't have involved more of Batman's vehicles. Imagine being able to get around via the Batmobile or his bike, boat or plane. I think even if we just had the car for a couple of levels, it would have made such a huge difference to the game. I also would have loved to have seen more of the classic Batman characters make appearances like the Joker, the Catwoman and the Riddler. I just feel there were so many missed opportunities which most people associate with Batman. You know what else would have been cool for customizations? Bat suits. Even though you can't see them on yourself, it would have been really cool to be able to collect all the different types of bat suits and be able to change into them. Have them hanging up in your bat cave to view. But as I mentioned, story, visuals and combat are just all up there with the gods. So overall, I mark Batman Arkham Shadow a 9.4 stars. Now, if you would like to show me some support, please hit that like button. You can also leave your thoughts of this game in the comments below for others to read. And then please come be part of this community and hit subscribe. Let's support one another in our gaming experiences. Thanks, guys, and happy gaming. Hey, sweetie. Wake up, wake up. What are you... Wake up. <laughs> wake up. Wake up. Oh, God. Wake up. No, 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 no. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. But... They just, that's all right. What's your name? They just, shh, look at me. What is your name? Bruce. Bruce? Bruce what? We can't leave them. No, no, we're not leaving them, okay? We're not. We're just gonna, we're gonna go over here. It's light. Right? We're gonna use this phone. <laughs>